Okay, so we've seen how to draw averaged uh, lines. Let's look at rolling averages. So sometimes the average can obscure the noise a bit too much. So you get, if there's a lot of noise, if you draw an average, then it tends to smooth out rather a lot. So an alternative, which is very common, is known as a rolling average, or sometimes a moving average, or the rolling running average, the rolling mean. All these terms mean the same thing usually. And the idea is that for every data point, you get an average of the last n data points, where n could be something like 7 to get an average over the last week, or 14 to get an average over the last fortnight, or so on. The, the, bigger, the, the bigger the interval, uh, the smoother the data you get. So, for example, if n was 14, a fortnight, then for the 14th of January, we'd compute an average for the 1st to the 14th inclusive. For the next day, the 15th, it would be from the 2nd to the 15th, and from the next day, it would be from the 3rd to the 16th. So it's only the, for a particular day, it's the average for the past n values, whatever that n is. If you're, if for our data, let's for the sake of argument, let's choose n is 7 from, uh, for our data, then we'll get a total of 359 averages because we, we start at um, 7th of January. We don't compute averages for the first, second, and uh, four, fifth, six. So we get 365 minus six in total. But there are ways of addressing that. So you can fill in the initial values by averaging shorter periods in those initial values or doing some weighting. So. Yeah, sorry, that's another technique is uh, you can weight the rolling average so that more recent data points have greater impact. Both of those things are quite common. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Um, first of all, pandas will do that for you. It's, again, it's a very common technique, so very uh, so well provided for in pandas. And pandas has a function called rolling, dot rolling, and then you just tell it what period you want. So we can set a rolling period of uh, seven and uh, we take the mean over that period and draw the, the picture. So again, this is exactly the same as before, except that now rather than using the average data, I'm using the rolling average data. Uh, and you'll see it's still, it's it's much more noisy than an average because an average is, is really smoothing out very uh, strongly. Whereas this is giving us a, uh, a much, it's a closer fit to the, the original line, the original data, uh, but it's, uh, so it's therefore more noisy, perhaps a bit more accurate, but uh, but again, a bit more noisy. Okay. Um, what I should say, I mean, as I mentioned, you could the, the more you change that figure, the smoother, the, so the larger that figure of period, the smoother the, the line is. So if we just look at some examples, so I'll just change, I'll just show you that. There, there's the rolling average. If I set the period to one, then it's, it's just averaging over the previous day, so it's not really averaging at all. Uh, control Shift F10. What you'll see is basically the, the lines will recreate, the, the average lines will just overlay the original lines when it finally decides to <laughs> draw the picture. Always takes, there it is. Okay, so uh, there's no there's no difference between the um, the original lines and the rolling average. If I change that to say 28, so we've got a month or more or less a month rolling average, then uh, this will give us a a much smoother line. There you go, much smoother than the one in the in the lecture slides. And obviously, you notice the bit at the beginning is missing because there's 28 days worth of data that's missing. So you you yeah, you choose what to do according to the you, the data you're dealing with. Okay, uh, that's one thing you can do. The other thing is to draw a trend line, uh, which is, you know, the direction it's heading. So a line showing whether the general trend of the time series is going up or down or if it's flat. Uh, the formal name for a trend line is a linear regression. It's linear because you're computing a straight line. And uh, there are other ways of there are other things you can do. So you can do non-linear regressions, which is a, a, a curved trend line. And, and that's, in some ways that's more realistic because most um, trends don't actually go in a straight line. You know, that's, that's a bit too much to hope for. But <clears throat> it, it, on the other hand, it's, it's hard to know what it should be. Should, should the trend be a, you know, a cubic curve or a, a quadratic curve? We don't really know. Um, 
but you can co you can compute those things. And the other thing you can do is uh, multivariate regression, which is computing a trend line <coughs> for a combination of time series, but that's beyond the scope of this module. Okay, so in order to compute a trend line, um, we, we do have to use NumPy, I've forgotten this. We have to use NumPy to calculate the trend lines because Pandas doesn't do it for us. Uh, and so what we do, here's the program. Uh, we've, we've selected those top three uh, values, the, the AF and L top three products. Set up our figure, we draw the first initial data. So that's with this plt.plot. And then we reset the prop cycle. That's just so that the, the next set of lines we draw are going to be um, the same colors as the originals. And then we use NumPy to get a range of values um, in the X uh, variable. And we do a, a fitting and we calculate a trend. I'll look at that in the next slide. Um, notice, I think the only thing I want you to notice here is that we can use a when we do draw that line, we can use the dash, this line style equals dash dash minus minus to get a dash line. Uh, and that, uh, that then helps again to distinguish one thing from the other. To create a trend line, how do we do that? So we loop over all the selected columns. We use NumPy to get a polynomial curve using polyfit. And this, the one there looks like it might need, not be very important, but one is the, is the, is the, uh, the power of the regression. So this is a linear regression, so power one. If we want to do a quadratic, it's two, and a cubic is three. It, it refers to the polynomial that we're dealing with. Uh, we can then save the trend in this, uh, in this um, uh, function that we've calculated, and then we apply this trend against the date. So we take the, the trend of those x values, which are the, the values that NumPy has calculated, and, and plot them using this function called trend. OK, I think I'm going to stop there, and we'll see some more examples. But that's, that's uh, standard code for doing a, a linear regression or a trend line in our examples.